binomial. I'll write out the formula to show you the formula and the requirements and such, but there are calculator tricks for binomial probability distribution, which I love. So um, we're going to use the graphic calculator, pull it out if you have it um, or your app or whatever. And remember I told you before that um, we're either for statistics for this statistics course living in this button stat or this button bars where we're like second bars to get distribution. And so you're going to use that a lot today. Um, so binomial probability distribution, I'm going to just make this bigger. You guys can see my screen and everything. We're cool. Make sure that you can see that before I keep going. Cool. You can see my screen. Type yes in the chat if you can, just to make sure before I. Am I not? Okay, I don't know why I didn't. Okay, there. <laughs> All right. Um, so, binomial probability distribution is a particular type of discrete binomial probability distribution. Um, and I'm going to just write BPD from now on. Okay, binomial probability distribution. And um, this is a particular discrete probability distribution. If you remember the term discrete versus continuous, discrete was like finite or countable outcomes. Continuous had like decimal type of outcomes. So everything here, all, when we do a procedure here, um, all our outcomes are going to be whole numbers. I, I'm never going to get like an outcome that's like 2.5, whatever. It's always going to be a whole number type of outcome. I'll show you what I mean. Um, so like rolling a dice or die, you can only get um, outcomes that are whole numbers. You can get a one or a two or a three. That's a discrete type of situation. Um, now binomial particularly, again, I'll write that. It's discrete probability distribution. Binomial particularly has a, a few requirements. And once these requirements are met in discrete probability distribution, then we can use the tricks that we're going to learn on the calculator. So you uh, recognize a binomial type of situation when you have a fixed number of outcomes. OK, and we're going to represent the fixed number of outcomes as N. You have, um, you know, independent events. I'm going to need to grab a towel. Independent events. If I turn this on, is it too loud? Can you hear me still? I might have to go back and forth. It's like a filter. <laughs> it's hot in my in this room, so it helps. But if it's too loud, I'll shut it off. Um, I can hear it. Okay. <laughs> you have independent events. So the, the um, probability of, let's say, again, you rolling a die, you rolling a one, should not affect you rolling uh, something else after that, right? So if it's a fair die. So independent events, um, two outcomes, particularly for binomial, and we call them success or failure. And when it's like success, it's not necessarily um, like the better outcome, it's just the outcome that you wanna calculate the probability for, that's your defined success. Failure would be the complement, right? And then the probability of success for each event would be the same, stays the same per trial. P of S, probability of success stays the same per trial. Um, and if that, if that is true, if these are true, then we have a binomial probability distribution and P of X in a binomial probability distribution represents the probability of exactly X successes in N trials. X represents the number of successes. So if I say I'm rolling a die 10 times and I claim the success to be getting a two, then I have two outcomes. I'm either going to get a two or I'm not going to get a two. And two getting a two would be defined as my success. 
<clears throat> and if I want the probability of getting like three twos when I roll a die 10 times, that's this kind of thing here. There's a formula. You don't necessarily have to use the formula. I'll show you the calculation. But the formula is ncx times lowercase p to the x times lowercase q to the n minus x, such that lowercase p, and you want to know this notation, represents the probability of success. So if you ever see lowercase p, that's the probability of success <clears throat> in your situation, whatever your success is defined to be. Lowercase q is the probability of failure, which is the complement. And, and we said was the total number of outcomes, or we'll call them fixed trials, <clears throat> number of fixed trials, whatever. And then um, x is number of successes in those fixed trials. Now, formula is not bad, but it can be annoying depending on how many like probabilities you want to calculate. So your calc trick here, I'm going to write it out for you because I send you guys these notes after, is you want second, and I'll show you examples, vars, <clears throat> and p of x can be found by doing binome pdf and px. So you can either go through the formula or you can do this. Now this is one particular calculator trick that we use, you know, for the binomial case, but there's another one also. But let's uh, let's do something in the uh, we'll do something in from the assignment. So I have 54% of all. Let me type this so it's a little nicer. So far, so good. I don't know if you guys looked at anything yet, but just in case, 54% of all, this is an example from the assignment. All right, 54% of all Americans are homeowners. If 30 Americans are randomly selected, find the probability that blink different scenarios all right <clears throat> so so this is similar to question four on your binomial distribution assignment i just changed some numbers and i'm probably going to add some questions to it like i always do right so first of all you want to identify it as binomial um and you know to be able to use the stuff that we're going to learn right so notice that <clears throat> i have a percentage of a population they're all homeowners right um oh, i'm sorry they're all americans and they're we're talking about a percentage of them that are homeowners so if i randomly select one person from all americans the probability that that one person is a homeowner is 0.54 or 54 percent so i'm going to say that um it looks like I have two outcomes where either uh, this random person on, that I ask is a homeowner or not. So I'll define success just based on the questions asking about, you know, homeowners. Success, my S will be, you know, being a homeowner. And then the failure would be not. And this is not, again, success is not necessarily the better option. It's just the one that we're going to calculate the probability for if that makes sense. Um, so I have 30 Americans randomly selected. So I have a fixed number of trials, this fixed number of people. So I'm going to say my N is 30, right? Kind of like a sample size. This is my sample size. This is my fixed number of outcomes. I'm not going outside of 30 Americans. I'm just talking about 30 Americans, right? I already defined or talked about the fact that there are you know, two outcomes. So now I want to determine if they're independent events or if, you know, and, and then if the probability of success stays the same per event. I mean, obviously, like if I'm randomly choosing 30 people from all Americans, this person being a homeowner is not going to affect this person being a homeowner, right? They're independent of each other. So, you know, again, if I randomly talk to 30 Americans, one person being a homeowner, because it's random, is not going to affect another person being a homeowner. 
So yes, I do have independent events, right? They're independent of each other. One Asking one person if they're a homeowner is not affecting asking another person if they're a homeowner, their, their answers. So, so far my requirements are met. Last one, probability of success stays the same. Well, yeah, 54% of all Americans are homeowners, then the probability that one of them randomly selected from that is a homeowner would be 54% or 0.54. So if you, you know, obviously, you know, you're on your binomial probability assignment, so you know it's going to be binomial. But if you're on like the test and you want to, you know, I don't think they're, I don't think you're getting mixed up with probability from last week and this week. It's just the test of, you know, this kind of stuff. You know, it's probably going to be binomial. But you want to quick check this in your head, if that makes sense. Do you have a fixed number of outcomes? Are they, event, you know, are the events independent? Are there only two possible outcomes, you know, in terms of, um, I should say, fixed number of trials versus outcomes? Um, are there only two outcomes? That's one of the biggest parts of it. Are there only two um, outcomes? And then does the probability of success stay the same? So... Once I read this, I'm pulling out my information. I have 30 sample size, probability of success, because I'm claiming success to be um, being a homeowner, which again, success is not necessarily good and failure is bad. It's just what do I want to calculate the probability of? So if I was talking about calculating the probability of not being a homeowner, then that would be my success. Um, and then Q is um, the complement of that. So one minus 0.54. So every time I know, um, every time I know P, I know Q automatically. And sometimes, especially when we get to later stuff, people forget about Q because you don't necessarily need Q for the calculator trick. You would need it if you're using the formula. Um, so if you're not using it because you're using the calculator trick, you don't want to forget about it because you might see it again later. Okay. So. Um, all right, so far, I just want to identify it as binomial. That's that's all I've done. I pulled out the information. I want to, you know, define my variables, and then we'll find probabilities now. Find the probability that. Okay, so out of the 30, uh, out of the 30 Americans, exactly 10 of them are homeowners. Okay, so. I, again, here we go. All Americans, 54% are homeowners. If I randomly select one person out of that population, the probability that that one person is a homeowner is 54% or 0.54. I randomly choose 30 Americans, and I want to know what the probability that 10 of them, out of the 30, exactly 10 of them, out of the 30, are homeowners. Now, the term exactly... Um, <laughs> Typically, when you hear exactly, you should automatically think binomial. <laughs> That's like a giveaway that it's binomial. It's not always going to sound like exactly, but this particular binomial probability distribution, binom PDF, P this, this um, formula here, if you hear exactly this many out of this many, that, you know, calculating that probability, that is an indication of binomial. That is the indication to use this, okay? And that's the number of successes that I want. So my X is defined to be 10. Again, 30 total, that's my trials. Probability of success per is 0.54. And I wanna know the probability of X successes in N trials, getting 10 homeowners in 30 randomly selected Americans. So P of 10 is what I'm finding. Now, I'm not gonna have, I do have a video that shows you the formula. I'm not gonna do it here because I can send you that if you want to see how to go through the formula. I know you guys have your calculators and whatever, so let's just go straight to that. So I'm going to do binome PDF. And then my N is 30, comma, my P is 0.54, and my X is 10. And that's just the order in which I input. Now you're going to see, especially with the TI-84, that... Um, it's a little fancy, kind of directly asks you for what, um, you know, what, let's put it like that. It directly asks you for what um, this stuff is. I'll show you. So on top of ours is distribution. That's where I'm finding binome PDF. 
So second and vars. This stuff is going to pop up. Now there's stuff in here that you're going to use for the rest of the semester. This is a good place to know, you know, especially the stuff up here. But I'm going to scroll down for now <laughs> and I'm going to look for binome PDF. Now there's two here. I'm going to talk about binome CDF in a second, but binome PDF is what I want because I want exactly this many successes in this many trials. PDF. OK. And then enter. And you know, for the TI-84, it's nice and fancy. It asks you for total number of trials. And particularly in this case, it's 30 Americans that were selected. So 30 are my trials. Small p is the probability of success, which we said success was defined to be homeowners for this. P is 0.54. X value, I'm talking about exactly 10 of them being homeowners out of the 30, that's this particular case. So my X value for this one is just 10. Scroll down, paste, enter. See the order in which it happens. This is what it looks like after. If I know PDF, N comma P comma X. Some of the like older calculators, TI-83s and such, like this is how they have it. They don't have um, that fancy like where it asks you for trials and P. So you have to know the order in which to input it. But you guys have cool calculators, so. And then enter. <laughs> Done, that's it. 0 0.01 and then we're rounding probably to four digits. Doesn't say, but most likely three or four. So 0 0.0114 approximately. So there's about a 1.14% chance that if I go to 30 randomly selected people, Americans, that 10 of them are homeowners, exactly 10 of them, just 10. Now, the reason the exactly is important too is because that, that could be in any order. It could be the first 10 are homeowners and the last 20 are not. It could be the middle 10 are homeowners and you know the first 10 and the last 10 are not. I don't have to consider all those combinations because of the fact that this is doing all that for me. But when I look at the formula, that's where this combinations portion comes from because of the fact that you know exactly 10 is considering all the possible combinations of how I can get those 10 out of the 30 being homeowners. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. So let's assume you have, we'll just use the same example. Um, go ahead. I see you, Jennifer. I'm going to do another one. We'll do it together. 54% um, of homeowners, 30 random, whatever, it randomly selected. Find the probability that exactly, I don't know, let's do a good amount of them. 25 of them are homeowners. Okay, exactly. 25 of them are homeowners. And again, when I hear exactly, um, that's an indication of binomial, especially binomial PDF. And I want exactly 25. So my number of successes here is 25. Um, so I'm looking for P of 25 for this particular example. So really the only thing that's going to change is the X, because now I'm talking about a different number of successes. So I'm doing binomial PDF again, because I'm talking about exactly 25 out of the 30. My N, 30, my P, 0.54. The only thing that's changing is the X, which is 25 for this particular example. Um, finding my known PDF, I go to second and VARS because I want distribution. So second and VARS. Then I'm scrolling down to binome PDF, not CDF, PDF, which mine is A, mine is like letter A. Trials are still 30, probability of success is 0.54, but now my X value is gonna be 25 because I want 25 out of the 30. Oops. This is how it shows up and then enter again. When you hit bars, make sure you press second and bars. Are you on the physical calculator? Or are you on an app? I'm on the T84 plus, but when I hit second, it's just a blank screen. Yeah, but make sure you hit second and then you hit bars. Okay. 
Make sure you hit second and then VARS because you want to pull up the distribution, that D-I-S-T-R on top of VARS. So second and then VARS and then scroll down to binome PDF. Is it and then uh, now this is this is a good example because the way that this came out I want to show you what that means so did that did that work do you see that now yeah that worked okay good thank you now um, this is important because I've seen students make this error a lot um, you get an outcome 5.991 and you can never have a probability greater than one so this doesn't make sense but this is the important part here e negative four and if you've never seen that before, this is your calculator's way of telling you scientific notation. Scientific notation. So this is the same thing as saying 5.991 times 10 to the negative 4. So if you ever see this E thing, this is scientific notation. And then scientific notation, obviously your calculator can't fit like extremely large or extremely, extremely small numbers. Okay. So it has to represent it with scientific notation. That's how we use scientific notation. And that means when I have this times 10 to the negative four negative exponent, that means that this decimal should be moved four places to the left if you remember scientific notation. One, two, three, four. So this is the actual value that that is telling me is the probability of getting exactly 25 out of the 30 Americans as homeowners. It's very small. Make sense? So far, so good. <laughs> so will we write the whole value out or do you use still round to the fourth decimal? I was still round to the fourth. Let me see if they have okay. it represented. Uh, at most, I was still round to the fourth. Yeah. Most of these actually are not as small as mine. Look, just looking in the homework real quick just to see if they have it because they won't represent it as scientific in the homework. I haven't seen it represented that way. But you have to know how to interpret what the calculator is telling you, right? Um, now, I can come up <laughs> with an infinite number of questions, <laughs> basically a lot of questions just for this one particular case because I could do exactly, you know, I could, I could call exactly for days, right? But I'm gonna change it now. Instead of saying exactly, I'm gonna say at most. 10 of them are homeowners. So I changed something. <laughs> I changed, let me make this pink now. <laughs> I changed, instead of saying exactly 10, I said at most 10. And at most, what does at most 10 mean? at most means you know that up or to. up to that or less right so this is including i'm gonna write it all out i'm gonna say uh, at most up to as she said up to 10 right this is including exactly zero of them this is including exactly one of them this is including exactly this is including all of these possible outcomes as at most 10. And I personally, especially with this formula, do not want to calculate each one of these separately, because there's a lot of them, and then add them all up. That's technically what you would have to do, but there's a calculator trick that will help me with that. <laughs> so um, let's put that here, calculator trick. So I'm going to actually I'm gonna write this out and make it nice and neat. So if I say exactly, right? Exactly. X. Successes and end trials. Then that indicates I'm gonna do binome PDF. Binome PDF. Now I'm talking about at most. Uh, at most X. This is going to indicate what we call binome. CDF, that's where we use the CDF. And this is just going to be a little, um, I'm going to write some stuff up here. The binome CDF is particular. Um, it represents the sum, 
right? Starting at zero, always starting at zero up to some particular number of successes, binome CDF. And when I input this, when I input this into my calculator, the X that I put, because it's still also NPX, the X that I put is going to be the X from here. Okay. Now, if I'm using C, think cumulative because it is a sum. Binome CDF is doing a sum for you. So when you when you see binome CDF, think cumulative because it's automatically a sum. But it's only the sum from zero up until some value. And whatever the last thing that you're adding into that sum is, that's what you're putting as your X for binome CDF. So if I'm doing this one at most 10, I'm going from zero to 10. This is doing binome CDF. N is still 30 because there's 30 total people that we're talking about. Uh, P is still 0.5. Oops. P is still 0.54, but the X here is 10. So I'm going to find binome CDF in the same place that I find binome PDF. I'm going to go second and then VARS because I want to pull up distribution on top of VARS. And I'm going to scroll down, make sure that I have now CDF, cumulative, right? Binome CDF. Enter. Because this is not, the, you know, like putting stuff here is not going to be an indication of whether you have a sum or not. It's the CDF versus the PDF, okay? So you have to pay attention to which one you're choosing. 30 trials, 0.54 is my success. My X value is 10, right? Because I'm going up to 10. And then enter. And this does the sum for me. That's what this represents, 0.0183, if I'm rounding approximately. 01, <laughs> I don't know why I switched that. 0.0183. I have a little delay on my thing. I don't know why. 0.0183, okay, All right? said that right I wrote that right <laughs> okay so um this is like me doing binome pdf for zero binome pdf for one binome pdf for two binome pdf for three and adding it all up this is the same thing as doing all of that binome cdf did all that work for me you can imagine like having to do that with the with the you know formula to be a pain in the butt but <laughs> now I could play around with this okay I can ask this different ways um, let me see questions, questions, no questions. Okay. So I'm gonna make up another problem. Lots of problems I can come up with. We'll still use the same example. Let's do less than, less than 20 of them are homeowners. <clears throat> just you know they can say at most less than greater than you know exactly all these things are fair game you just have to know what that means less than 20 means everything smaller than 20 is it including 20 smaller. no no it's not because it's not less than or equal to like at most 10 that says, you know, I'm including 10 up to 10, right? Everything less than 10 and 10 less than 20 is everything smaller than 20, not including 20. So this is like, I'm a, sometimes I say when you're doing these at most at le at least and all that kind of stuff, I say, write out what it means and then do your trick after. So less than 20 means from zero to one, da, 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 all the way to 19, stopping at 19. But because I'm taking a sum and I'm starting that sum from zero, that means I can use binome CDF and make my life easier. And then my N is still 30 because I'm still using the same example. My P is still 0.54, but my X, what's my X here? Nineteen. 19, the last one that you want to add up. Okay, let's see what that is. So binome CDF, right? I'm looking for a second bars. So again, be careful because it's not PDF, it's CDF. CDF, I'm really only changing the last value, right? 
which was 19, because everything is still the same kind of situation. And 0.8874 from rounding to 4. 0.8874 approximately. Okay. So 88% chance that I go to a group of 30 people and less than 20 of them are homeowners. That makes sense because that's not that's including you know, none of them being homeowners. That's including exactly one of them being a homeowner. That's including two out of the, you know, 20 or uh, two out of the 30 are being homeowners and all the way up to 19. That's adding up a lot. So I would expect a higher probability for that scenario. Um, I'm going to take this to the next page because now I'm going to play with uh, complementary events. Whatever makes my life easier, okay? Oops. Whatever makes my life easier when it comes to this. So this is why sometimes I say um, write out your situation and then figure out what the easiest method is to, to calculate it. Do I want to actually do just each one of these or do I want to use CDF to make my life easier? Sometimes it's easier to do PDF for them. Sometimes it's easier to do CDF. Obviously, I don't want to do PDF for all of these. So CDF made this easier and then these are exactly cases but now let's say I ask for this same situation just practicing let's say well, I forgot what I was on I'm on E okay <laughs> E let's say okay my copy. more than 20 of them are homeowners Okay, so now I have to just figure out, you know, more than. What does more than mean? More than 20. It, obviously, that's bigger than 20, but is it including 20? Does more than um, 20 include 20? Well, I would say no. No, it doesn't. More than 20, if I say I have more than $20, <laughs> or if I have more than 20 cookies, I don't have 20 cookies, I have more than that. I have a lot of cookies to eat. More than 20 means everything bigger. I'm just gonna say everything bigger than 20. Bigger, okay? So, <clears throat> um, and that's out of the 30, right? So that's starting at 21, but that also includes 22 and all the way to 30. That's including all of this sum. Now, <clears throat> the problem with this is that it doesn't start at zero. And so I cannot use CDF directly for this. Because again, binome CDF is particular starting at zero. So how do I do this then? Because I don't want to do PDF for 21 and binome PDF for 22 and binome PDF for 23. I don't want to do all that. So this is where the concept of complementary events can make your life easier. The complement of 21 or more, right, out of 30 is 20 or less, right? This any day now, Jackie. My computer is like delayed for some reason. Okay. All of this up to 20 is the complement of 21 or more. Is that true? This here is the complement of this. Because remember, complementary events include everything if they put if they come together. They include the total sample space, right? And this particular part, I don't have a problem with because it starts at zero. It's a sum. I can do binome CDF for this. But <clears throat> I know that this sum is not directly the same as this sum, but complementary events add up to one. So if I do one minus the complement, it is the same thing as adding up all of these. I'm using the concept of complementary events to make my calculation easier here. Complementary events. Tell me if that makes sense. Yeah, Haley, I'll do the discrete type of tables after this. I just want to go in detail with this, and then I'm almost done. I'll show one more example, maybe, just to practice this one concept. 
and then I'll go back into the tables, okay? Um, does that make sense? So you see how like this is going to make my calculation much easier. So that's why I say, you know, write out the situation that they're talking about. Like exactly 10, that's just P of 10. Exactly 25, P of 25. At most 10, I'm going all the way up to 10. If I'm starting at zero with a sum, I can do binom CDF. And then this is my X. Less than 20, all right, everything's smaller than 20, but not including 20. So that's from zero to 19. It starts at zero, it's a sum, I could do CDF. And then 19 is my X. You know, write out the situation and then determine what the fastest way of calculating that is. Do you need to use concept of complementary events or not? You don't always have to, right? More than 20 implies, you know, everything bigger than 20. So from 21 to 30, because I'm only talking about 30 Americans. So do I want to do this, each of these? Because I can't do CDF, it doesn't start at zero. I have to, I have to start at zero, right? I have to start at zero with a sum to do binome CDF. So because the complement of 21 and up is 20 and down, one minus the complement is going to give me the same thing as doing all that. So one minus binome CDF where N is 30 still, P is 0.54, and then it's a four. <laughs> and then um, X in this particular case is 20. But don't forget to do one minus that, okay? Because I'm talking about complementary events. Oops, where'd my calculator go? So one minus, I can plug it all directly in. Second, bars down to binome CDF, where N is 30, my P is 0.54, I forgot what my X is, up to 20. And then it does one minus that for me, 0.55, well, 0.5597, this is gonna take me to point, sorry, 0 0.05597. This is gonna take me to 0 0.056, because nine can't go to 10, so point. 056, approximately 0 0.056, approximately. So <clears throat> I'm gonna leave it at that because I can come back on it tomorrow and do another example if you want. Let me stop this recording so that I don't overdo my recording sometimes if they're too long. Okay. <clears throat>